welcome everybody to our Soulcast Media Live. Um, for those joining, welcome. I'm looking at all the names and cities that you guys are coming in from. Singapore, Houston, Texas, New Jersey, Chicago, Malaysia. Oh my God, we have a whole gamut of people. New York, Hawaii. Oh my goodness. Well, first of all, everybody, welcome to my Soulcast Media Live. I see the thumbs up, so thank you so much. Um, before we kind of dive into this, I just want to give everyone a quick overview. So again, my name is Jessica Chen, and I am the founder and CEO of Soulcast Media. I'm joined here by one of my very good friends, Dean Carell, who I'm going to have introduce himself in a little bit. But what we're going to be talking about today, for all of you guys, you guys can see it on the bottom here, we're going to be talking about achieving business success and how to be confident when it comes to communicating. There's a lot that goes into this and Dean and I are going to be talking about this. So the conversation is going to be about 40 minutes or so. So if you guys have any questions as we're going through this, as we're chatting, please throw it in the chat because we're going to also want to answer your questions. So without further ado, I want to introduce my guest, <laughs> Dean. Welcome. Welcome to My Soulcast Media Live. Why don't we tell the audience a little bit about who you are, what you do. Um, so welcome, Dean. Well, Jessica, it is such a treat to be with you today. And I thank you for the opportunity to join you. I have uh, thoroughly enjoyed watching your courses on uh, uh, LinkedIn Learning. And uh, you have a new one that just came out the other day that I'm watching right now. So again, it's a treat to join you uh, today. Uh, I am a, a career and executive coach. I'm a sales trainer. And I too have courses with LinkedIn Learning and I'm the author of a book called Mastering the Basics, Simple Lessons for Achieving Success in Business. And uh, so a diverse portfolio of things that I've been involved with. And uh, for the majority of my career, I spent it as a sales director with uh, a number of major uh, book publishers. So uh, about six years ago, I had transitioned and started a whole new uh, career and I'm having uh, just a ton of fun along the way. I have so many things that honestly I want us to chat about. And just so you guys know, how did Dean and I meet? So a lot of people were like, hmm, how, how do you know Dean? So the reason Dean and I met is, as Dean mentioned, he's also a fellow LinkedIn learning instructor. And the beauty of LinkedIn learning is, honestly, all the instructors, first of all, are fantastic. The team at LinkedIn learning is fantastic. And I feel like us instructors, even though our courses are different, you're, a lot of your courses, Dean, are in sales. A lot of mine are, of course, in communications. But a lot of us like to reach out to each other. We like to reach out to each other, say hi, you know, give each other's kudos of like, hey, I love this course. So that's actually how Dean and I connected. And I think, Dean, you were the one that reached out to me initially, I believe. Is that right? Well, people are probably laughing because that's one of the things that I love doing. I love networking and I love meeting people. And it's one of the skills, whether you're new to business or whether you've been in business a long time like I have, it is reaching out and connecting with people and uh, learning about what they do and listening to what they do. And uh, it has opened up uh, you know, so many new things for me. And uh, that's how you and I met. I watched one of your courses and I said, wow, Jessica, this is great. And uh, that's how we got a chance to know each other. And here we are uh, today uh, on your uh, Soulcast Media Live broadcast. That's right. So uh, you're actually touching upon a point that I also want to talk about because so a lot of us here on LinkedIn, obviously, we all believe our career is really important. We're always thinking about, okay, how can we level up? How can we continue to grow? How can we continue to improve in our career? And one of the things that I admire about you, Dean, and you kind of mentioned this, that you're not afraid of reaching out to people. And I think when you first reached out to me, you sent this really warm message and it really is it felt so personal it felt mm -hmm. that you actually watched what i was doing you were like i love this and it, when i read it initially i was like well first of all it wasn't spam right because we get those two but mm -hmm. it was just how thoughtful your message was so i'm curious dean for people who are watching you know the idea of reaching out to complete strangers and doing it thoughtfully is very daunting how do you actually go about doing this and i'm sure it has to do with a lot of your sales background as well well, just to make it clear, I don't write letters all the time to everybody, just complete strangers. But <laughs> no, but if I've watched something and I'm interested in a topic or a subject, I do reach out and I say, I enjoyed what I watched or I enjoy what you're doing and I'd like to learn more about you. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a key lesson in business and also for those of us in sales or whatever our profession is, you're not selling. <laughs> you're yeah. trying to uh, meet people and engage 
which I think is so critically important. So um, if I like somebody, I like what they've done, or I'm curious, which is what all good salespeople are, you're curious, uh, you reach out. And that doesn't mean everything is always going to be a connection, but uh, you mm -hmm. talk about um, all these great instructors on LinkedIn Learning. I am, I'm so blessed. I, I've met you know, dozens and dozens that I've become good friends with across the board in all mm -hmm. different topics. And uh, just from simple uh, correspondence, you know, let me know a little about more what you're doing. And uh, too often we think of networking as, you know, as having that little name tag that says, you know, hi, I'm Jessica or hi, I'm Dean. And we're in a ballroom or someplace and, you know, networking like that. Networking is as simple as uh, just sending an email or a connection saying, I'd like to learn more about you. Yep. Absolutely. And that's the thing. And this is, I'm sure you can vouch for this, but people don't like being souls to, even when it comes to like an idea or even within your team, right? People don't want to feel that pressure or being pushed to do really anything. Right. And you said that word curious. It's one of my favorite words. And for many of those who are on this Soulcast Media Live with us, you guys probably know my background I used to be a former journalist as well. And for us, we kind of have to always put our hat on of like, okay, instead of trying to force anything, why don't we just ask some questions, right? Some good, thoughtful questions that'll really get people engaged. So Dean, one of the things I wanted to ask you is, so you also wrote a book, right? Mm -hmm. I actually have that book with me. And a lot of it is, and you know, I, I love the introduction of this book because you kind of said where it's like, you know, I just want to put it all into a book of things that I learned along the way that have helped me with my own personal success. Can you just tell us some of your learnings in this book? And what are some things you learned along the way through your career? Well, it does. I talk about basics. I mean, that is the mm -hmm. uh, I don't have an MBA. I don't have an advanced degree. And, you know, there's no PhD on my wall here. Uh, sign there. And how do you become successful in business and how do you do well in business? And I always talk about the importance of maximizing and enhancing the skills uh, that we were born with. And that means it's a lifetime project. And I look back at how I did things in my 20s. And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness sakes. And uh, so you're constantly looking for ways to improve. So that was the basis of my book, just the lessons that I've learned in business. Um, early on, I used to be very intimidated by those people with lofty titles or advanced degrees and so forth. And I realized that they were just as smart and also just as weak as I was in certain <laughs> areas. And uh, so what can I do to you know, do well in business. And that's by working harder to enhance the skills that I was given. And those are the lessons that I try to teach people. Mm -hmm. What are some of the ones that stood out to you as you were writing this book? Any like favorite lessons that anytime you're talking to folks, you would like to share? Well, I have a list of, you know, there's like a list of 20 that I always talk to people <laughs> about. But I think that the most important one is, is emotional intelligence, but also some degree ties back with networking and emotional intelligence is being aware and showing care and compassion and, mm -hmm. uh, and thoughtfulness to another person and actually listening. And, uh, you know, you talk about being a journal, your background being a journalist, the best salespeople I often say are investigative journalists, you know, <laughs> asking questions and listening who, what, where, when, how, why you're not selling, you're learning. So mm -hmm. emotional intelligence, listening, uh, being genuine, being authentic, you know, I, I, those are words that sometimes are tossed around, you know, lightly, but it's, it's, it's something I'm always, I always like when people say, Dean, what you are, what you see is what you get with, with me. And I am what I am. And it's that a genuine style that I try to convey. Um, mm -hmm. Another thing I look for, which is very difficult in our careers, and that's have confidence in ourselves. And uh, that's a lifelong project too. And that just doesn't happen overnight. And uh, Throughout the course of our careers, there's a the highs and lows. I mean, Jessica, you had a great career, an Emmy Award-winning career as a journalist, and you said, oh, I want to change this to become an entrepreneur. Yeah. I'm sure you had a few doubts along the way after you left, correct? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Just like you, Dean, I didn't go to business school, right? Mm -hmm. I, I was a journalism major. I always thought I would stay in news more or less, right? So when I had that seed in my head of like, hmm, is this something that I really want to consider doing? It was absolutely daunting, right? That security that I had before mm -hmm. was completely gone. And like I said, it's not like I knew the ins and out of business. All I really knew was perhaps just talking to people about it. But that's kind of where you start. This is how you start with anything, right? It's yeah. kind of being willing 
to engage with other people, learn from other people, and obviously be very gracious to other people who are willing to lend um, their time to you, right? Um, so one of the things that I wanted to also ask you about, so obviously a lot of the people who are watching this, you know, I talk about communications a lot. That's kind of like my passion, just because I feel like communications is something that can be learned. A lot of people feel that you're either just born a natural good communicator, which some people are, I was not. I was very shy, you know, introverted and things like that. And for me, I really pushed myself to learn how to build that confident speaking. But also there's a lot of techniques. And I, and I talk about it a lot um, with people mm. I work with. For you, Dean, were you always like a very good communicator? Are you extroverted? Um, how do you go about thinking about this? Well, I, I enjoy speaking. Uh, you you had a post recently where you talked about uh, being nervous sometimes before yeah. you, you present. You do public speaking and present. And, uh, you know, some people through the years would always say, Dean, you seem so uh, so calm and so confident when you're on stage and when you're talking. And, and I laugh and I say, when they'll say, do you ever get nervous? And I say, I'm a nervous wreck sometimes. And, you know, we all get butterflies and we all have that stomach get in a knot. And, you know, my tech, you talked about your technique being uh, you meditate, you step mm -hmm. back and you think for a while. You know, I'm not a I'm not a long term meditator, but I'm, I do stop to catch my breath and I count to 10. And my technique is I just have to get through the first 30 seconds. So I practice that first 30 seconds of a presentation or a public speaking uh, engagement. And, and and the other technique I have is that first sentence is very short. So, hi, Jessica, how are you tonight? It's a pleasure being with you. Pause. And then you can catch your breath and you can actually feel, you know, you get some, for me, it gets some of the anxiety out. Everybody has their techniques. Um, and if anybody says to you they never get nervous, I don't think they're telling the truth. <laughs> and it's a uh, it, it it shows your commitment to want to do well. Those those are positive butterflies or positive nervousness, and uh, yeah. so those are I techniques I use. If ever any, all the people who are watching this right now, if there's one thing we want to debunk, actually, is people do get nervous when they public speak, even people who constantly do a lot of public speaking. And the video Dean uh, mentioned was one that I posted yesterday here on LinkedIn. I did a little behind the scenes video, and this was actually right before I went and did a public speaking, and I was starting to feel those nerves. And so I was like, you know what? Let me embrace this moment, and let me actually just shoot a video because I'm literally feeling those feelings right now. So in that video, I'm talking about how, you know, I still get anxious and a lot of that anxiousness actually is the anticipation, right? It's the yeah. anticipation of, okay, we're about to start in five minutes. We're about to start in two minutes. So it's those butterflies. But even like prior, maybe I think it was maybe like 15 minutes prior to it, because we're all at home, I'm at home. I was able to actually, like you mentioned, do that meditation. Sometimes I'll even like, like I said, lie on the ground and do it just to kind of like center myself a little bit. And then I'll come back up and then I suddenly feel a lot more grounded because at that point, 15 minutes before any speaking engagement, there's no point in trying to like review your notes anymore because all the preparation you should have been doing days and days before. So really your last five, 10, 15 minutes should just be more about grounding yourself that's kind of how I see it. I don't know about you, Dean. <laughs> well, you hit two words there. That's Those are big things that I talk about in training in everything in business is planning and preparation. Yes. And that, that's been on my list. I mean, you can't get ready for a, a public speaking engagement the night before. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you can't wait to the last minute. And, uh, and you can't get ready for a sales call the night before. You can't get ready to do one of your LinkedIn learning courses the night before. Everything that we do requires a time frame. You don't make a Thanksgiving dinner or a holiday dinner and prepare for it the night before. If you've taken the turkey out of the freezer the day of Thanksgiving or a holiday, you've got a problem. So yeah. everything involves planning and preparation, including public speaking. And the more you practice within reason, because some people also then over-practice. Again, I, for me, the strategy is I work on my first 30 seconds to two minutes of the presentation. And the rest of that after that are bullets. Yeah, I love that. Um, so one of the things that I get a lot of questions on, and I want to get your thoughts on this too, Dean. So a lot of the people I work with um, are people who are looking to advance, right? Advance in their careers. And they're hardworking. 
intelligent, smart, right? They know how to get the work done. But I think a lot of people struggle with that interpersonal uh, communications, interpersonal connection, uh, whether this is reaching out to certain people, knowing how to put themselves out there without being too pushy or stepping on toes. Um, I'm curious, what are your thoughts and strategies on people who are not necessarily the most extroverted or comfortable putting themselves out there, but it's so necessary to do? It is necessary, but sometimes we think we have to put ourselves out there. We think you have to meet 50 people. And I always try to bring it back to, you know, focus on, I just need to le learn about and meet Jessica. I don't need to meet your whole family. <laughs> I don't need to meet all of your relatives, the coworkers you're involved with. I'm learning about you. So in your companies, it's those that are a higher level. We're all nervous of the CEO. We're nervous of the CFO. We're nervous of about the head of HR. Well, get them in a one-in-one -in -one setting and reach out to them and meet them when they're in the elevator. You know, it's, it's so funny. I have met executives in the, hi, good morning. How hard is that to say? They're as nervous, you know, when CEOs get new jobs or chief revenue officers get new jobs, they're a nervous wreck too because mm -hmm. they're under the spotlight. They want to hear from the rest of the organization also that they're welcomed. So what's, how hard is it to say, how are you making out? How's the new job? You're not threatening. <laughs> That's yeah. talking about the basics of interpersonal communications. It's also just showing a smile. And uh, I've learned that through the years and working with people that uh, more than nine times out of 10, they will reach out uh, back to you. If they don't, <laughs> I got to tell you, these aren't people you want to don't want to work with. <laughs> you won't want to work long term because they're not, you know, confident in their positions. So, um, you know, for me, it's it's, it's basic uh, interpersonal communication is a, is a learning skill. Yeah, you pointed out on a few things, like even those in the highest of levels, right? The the chairman, the CEO, you know, they have people that they also have to impress too, right? right. Don't think that just because they're on the highest of the high in terms of the company, that there's not people that they have to be accountable to, right? So I also agree with you. I do think that there is this, you know, they want to hear from you too. You know, right. if they're not the ones reaching out to you, there's nothing wrong with you even simply saying, like you just said, hey, how's it going? Right. And I think what you actually just did was super important. And this is tone of voice. So mm -hmm. I think tone of voice is huge in terms of getting people to actually, you know, turn around or, you know, whatever it is. People who are able to be like, hey, how's it going? Right. And you have this body language, the smile, that energy people are going to gravitate towards that. I mean, you just did it, you know, when you were kind of just doing that, like mock, like, Hey, you know, people gravitate towards people's tone of voice versus kind of being that shy, like timid, you know, I think people appreciate that energy. Well, your, your course on executive presence uh, online is, I think is critical because when we first started, you know, a year ago at this time, we were all getting used to working, uh, doing video calls, video conferencing. Sure. We've done them before, yeah. but, now it's really official doing that. And how many people were you online with when you would say hello? There's nothing worse than the Zoom call or the Teams call when you've got 20 people in a room and they're all like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. You talk about, and so when I've given presentations, it's, it's almost like a real setting where you'll see somebody in the room and they're nodding their head and they're smiling. And I feel like I'm gravitating that person looking at them. It's almost, yep. it's very real when you're doing public speaking, speaking live, when there are people in the audience nodding and or smiling, you find yourself going around the room and looking at those people. And it's very true with a Teams call or a Zoom call. Also, you find yourself gravitating to that. So that presence that you give and what you taught in that and teach in that course is your presence. It's just like we are live and in person right now. So mm -hmm. smile. I mean, I, I'm, I use my hands too much. That's always been something I got to, I mean, I'm going like this all the time, but it's, but it's a, uh, it, it's how do you, you're, how do you look to the people on the other side of the screen and Absolutely. just showing energy and enthusiasm? 
Absolutely. Um, so I'm going to actually just do a really quick introduction again. I know a few, a good number of people actually just joined. So again, welcome to the Soulcast Media Live. I'm here with my friend, Dean. And we're just talking about communications, business, interpersonal communications, how to get in front of the right audience. If anybody has any questions, you know, again, feel free to throw it in the chat. Dean and I are here. We're happy to um, answer your questions for you because now this is the opportunity. We're here for you guys and you guys are part of the conversation. Um, one of the things that I'm actually doing right now, um, and perhaps, I mean, Dean, you know this because I, to I told you. So I'm right now in the process of doing a training with um, a large pharmaceutical company, and they're fantastic. But one of the, the things I'm teaching them is we're all doing this on Zoom, right? So everybody's on a call, a sales call, a team call on video. And I always talk about you can still use your body language. It's arguably easier to use your body language when you're in person, right, because you feel that energy but still on video, that is so important. A lot of people get stuck on, they put their hands on their mouth and they just leave it there, right? And they're just stiff. So I'm always saying, take your hands off that mouse, take your hands off that pen or paper. And when you talk, use your hands. Suddenly it just seems more engaging, right? And that's just kind of one you know, trick in communications that I think is so important. Well, it's a learning curve for so many people right now. I go back to what I just said. I mean, all of a sudden, you know, March 15th last year, the world changed. Every profession changed. And so, uh, and you're working with salespeople right now. I talk with salespeople all the time. Jessica, I spent my whole career going face to face. I was in offices with people. I, I mean, I love, I'm a, I'm a hugger. I'm a, I'm, I shake hands and talk about a change of style. Uh, yeah. so now all salespeople, it's, it's how we're going to be able to do this. And it's going to, it's not going back. You know, there will be some hybrid. We're going to see people in person, but for the most part, you know, whether it's 50, 50 or whatever, we're going to be doing a lot of selling and presenting just like we're doing right now. And that ongoing training of how we do this is going to be going to be essential. I'd say, uh, the world of sales is never going to be the same again. And, uh, that's so uh, your training, my training, other things that we're doing, I think are going to be critically important for people. And here's the golden nugget, though. Whether or not you are in sales, everybody, anytime they talk, they're they're selling something, right? Whether it's an idea, whether it's to get your team on board, whether it's to convince your boss. So in some capacity, we are always selling something, even though my title is not salesperson, right? Um, yeah. And I think that's why communications is so important. Well, communication is critical because it, it it's, it's shows who you are and, and you take all of those things from empathy to emotional intelligence and it, it comes through in how you communicate with people. And uh, I talk about, you know, those skills of sales professionals and I have a list and none of them have anything to do with sales. I mean, I talk about yeah. being positive and being outgoing and being fresh and engaging and being coachable. No matter what job you have, um, whether you're a CFO, CMO, or in marketing, sales, whatever, it's uh, always being willing to learn more and uh, being coached and being trained and learning, for example, how to communicate better. Um, mm -hmm. So it's lifelong yeah. learning. No, it really, really is. It's that you know growth mentality that we always hear about. So I want to get your thoughts, Dean. Um, for those who are listening, if you have any questions, throw it in the chat so we can answer it for you. And again, I see the thank you and I see everybody's comments right now. But anyways, I just want to say, um, Dean, my question for you is, are you a naturally introverted or extroverted person? And how do you adapt depending on the environment? Well, depending on some of the people who are listening right now, I say Dean's very extroverted. You know, it's and or Dean's, you know, I, I think I'm a little of both. I think we all have a little of both of that in all of us. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, I cringe also going to a big room with a lot of people, and I feel like I have to introduce myself or whatever. But once I get there, I'm very happy and I enjoy it. Yeah. And uh, I also like my alone time, just sitting in the backyard, uh, working in the yard by myself, and doing my own thing. Um, that's a good segue for, uh, you know, introvert, extrovert, what we've been through the past year. Mm. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have been put in settings who are extroverts and all of a sudden are working from home. And some people who are introverts saying, hey, I love this. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm working by myself. I'm perfectly happy. So, uh, you know, I'm 
I am an extroverted person, but uh, I, uh, I don't mind being working by myself. But this last year has been a challenge for me. And oh really? Yeah, Why? It's, it's it's a I I love being face to face with people. Yeah. There's decades of selling and communicating with somebody right across the table from me, and you know, learning and listening and communicating that we are basically across the table from each other right now. But uh, um, this has been a learning curve for me, and I think it has been a learning curve for a lot of people that I've talked about over the past year of. Uh, you know, this is everyone has that smile and uh, say, yeah, this is great. I love my uh, Zoom call, Teams call. Or how many people are doing Zoom cocktail parties anymore? That, that, oh, gosh. That, that was popular, you know, a year ago. Now is I don't want to do that. Who wants to do that? You know, so learning curves, learning yeah. curves. OK, so I'm going to pivot really quickly. So you're also a career development coach, Dean. What does that mean and, and what do you do? I work with people. Well, when I left my job in the corporate world, mm -hmm. I said I wanted to get into coaching. I wanted to help people, you know, enhance their skills and develop their careers, uh, you know, in the corporate marketplace and the corporate world. And uh, I work with people who are right out of college, and I work with people who were later stages in their career. And uh, what I found my strength was is working people with people in the middle stages of their careers and navigating the corporate landscape. How do you work with a difficult boss? How do you work with a micromanager? How do you advance your career? How do you balance personal life, business life, which is, a, again, a real challenge right now because everyone's home, they're seven days a week, you know, working, per se. Um, and, uh, and how do they get to that next stage of their career? Or how do they stay happy in their current stage of their career? Mm -hmm. So I really enjoy it. It is a much more difficult job than I thought. One-on-one um, -on -one work in coaching is uh, is very difficult, and uh, there's a mm -hmm. real skill to it. So, uh, but I like it, but it's uh, it's it's tough. Yeah, and I can definitely attest to that. Um, you know, a part of the work I do too is also one-on-one, -on -one where I work with executives on their communications, their public speaking, their strategy, and how they want to communicate to their team. So, you actually mentioned one thing that actually was like, you know, I actually want to ask Dean this. How do you suggest people deal with difficult bosses? Because I'm sure that comes up quite often. What do you do? How do you think about it? How do you approach it? It's, it's probably the biggest surprise that I've encountered since I've gotten into coaching is that how many lousy managers there are out there or people who were put in the management positions who were never taught to be leaders. Yeah. And uh, I've been blessed. I worked with some great companies. I had great managers. I had great, great people I reported to. But I knew there were some tough people out there, but I never realized how many uh, they were uh, horrible managers. <laughs> Just they, horrible. People, oh, it's uh, the stories. That's what I said when I said before I hinted saying I find it difficult. The stories that I hear make me cringe. Mm. And and uh, um, 20 years ago, I probably would say to people, you know, I'm having a difficult time with my manager. Uh, I would say, communicate more, reach out more, find those opportunities to a checklist of things you can work on together. Let me also preface this by saying that every situation is different. So right. don't go on my statements tonight <laughs> saying, you know, I'm going to quit them all because I got a lousy boss. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but because you need to work it out with every specific uh, situation. But today mm -hmm. what I tell people is if you've worked with somebody who is a micromanager or is not mm -hmm. doing well, uh, then you need to uh, be more aggressive in finding new opportunities. You, you got to be always careful leaving or doing something, a knee-jerk reaction. That goes back to planning and preparation. I don't care what job you have. You always need to be keeping your eyes out for the new, next opportunity. Um, it's a line that uh, LinkedIn uses a lot, I re interestingly, with their organization, with their teams. They talk about the next play. And uh, it's, it's what are the next things you're going to be looking to do? So whether you're in a great situation or a more difficult situation, it's always keeping your eyes out for the next opportunity. And uh, um, life is too short to be in a situation where you're working with someone who is uh, not a good manager or is treating you poorly. And there's also the line of, you know, if somebody is really bad, you got to get out. I and mean, it's bad for your health. So it's... Uh, but again, every situation is different. Right, right. And we definitely have to preface that. Like that's probably, that may not be the solution for every single person right. if they're having a difficult boss. 
Um, you touched on a word micromanaging, and I feel during this, you know, pandemic time, a lot of people have had to reconcile what is this balance between micromanaging your team and also trusting that they're going to get the work done because we're all in different places now. And I think in today's world, you know, I mean, maybe I'll just speak for myself, right? I've worked with back then both types of bosses, people who are really just kind of like on me the whole time. It would stress me out, right? I've also worked with bosses who are like, this is what needs to be done. Go do it. Check in with me. I'll check in with you. And that's that's it. Personally, I functioned way better in the latter. Right. And so now when I, I have a very small team, and again, everyone's remote too, I'm very mindful too of I'm never texting them, what's the update? What's going on? Did, you know, I'm not doing any of that. I truly am clear in my expectations, right? Clear in what I want it to look like. Please reach out if you have any questions but I never hover. I hate hovering too, and I wouldn't want to be hovered over either. Goes back to, uh, you're, you're a good manager, you're a good leader, uh, you model the way, and uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's what the best uh, leaders do. And uh, uh, goes back to a lot of people were put in positions uh, where they were never really trained. Every person that you work with, every person you've hired has a different personality, a different style. Mm -hmm. Some people like, to have that daily schedule given to them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I did, I've worked with people, if I didn't talk with them every day, they, they were like, Dean, what are you mad at me? <laughs> and then uh, I had others, I had others, you know, I would talk to, you know, once every two weeks. So you have to have a strategy and a plan, an action plan for everybody you manage. And if you don't, uh, then if you're, you're creating yourself and putting a situation where you're gonna have the team in disarray. One plan, one size does not fit all for the teams that work for you. Absolutely. And that's the thing. And a lot of people in communications always say this, and there's so much truth to, to this. Any person you're interacting, you always have to keep them, the audience, in mind. What is it that they care about? What is it that will resonate with them? And making sure that you tailor your communications, your outreach to that to them. That's the only way it's going to um, resonate. So one thing I always like to ask my guests on this is the the ability to be a confident communicator when you're not necessarily confident in what you're doing at that moment how do you portray that confidence um when you're communicating when perhaps we're still figuring it out and i can definitely share kind of my thoughts on this too well i'd love to hear your thoughts on it i mean let's say you, you've talked about this again in your courses i mean it's we're all different i think it's for me communicating is i'm also being honest when i say i am nervous or i am authentic and genuine and saying the way i communicate is uh, through authenticity and and mm -hmm. and i'm very open in my beliefs and in my style and sometimes that is effective and sometimes it isn't but the, for me it works i think it's getting comfortable in who you are yeah. And that's one of the lessons of my book is saying at the end of the day, you can't change who you are. We can improve certain things. But my personality is my personality yeah. and my style is my style and I can you know hone things. So with, as I communicate, um, I'm not going to be the person in the room, you know, reading in a monotone voice. Uh, I, my hands are going to be moving. <laughs> I yeah. am going to be talking and moving. And that's that's just the way I am. So. Um, it's the confidence in believing in the skills that we were given and being able to continue to enhance them. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. I see um, Jen's comment right now. Platinum rule, treat people how they want to be treated and not how we want to be treated, right? Um, so my thoughts on confidence and communication. So the one thing that I've learned and that has worked really well for me is the idea of always being proactive. Right. Mm -hmm. So if there is something that you're in the middle of doing and you are noticing that even if things are not going the way that, you, that it's planned, things are potentially going awry, communicating that early on. Here's the thing. And this is, I feel like it's probably pretty true for a lot of people in the corporate world. Nobody wants to be surprised. Right. Oh. It's everybody. People get mad when they get surprised. What do you mean this? This didn't go this way. What do you mean? Right. So if you want to introduce honestly, this is probably one like the one. Success 101 in corporate world, do not surprise people. 
unless it's a very, very good surprise, right? But even so, right. people oh. want to be caught off guard. It's, and that's that's one of the golden rules. Yeah, it's it, no leader, or CEO, executive. That's the last thing that they want to get is surprised. Yes. And but it's the hardest thing as an individual because early on when you made a mistake or something's going wrong, we all try to fix it. And yeah. what happens is we dig a deeper hole. And then when you have to tell somebody something's gone wrong or there's a mistake or an error, then you got to tell somebody, then it's like, oh my gosh, it's almost too late. Yeah. It's really hard. But you have to raise your hand and, if, and when you something has gone wrong and you never want to surprise somebody. So you got to tell somebody and ask for help sooner rather than later. Absolutely. And this is where I think approach really makes a difference. Like mm -hmm. how do you approach these conversations, right? Obviously, like if you need to clue in um, your, your boss or whoever it is, you don't want to just do it at the end of a call. By the way, this isn't working, right? You know, I think you have to, you know, set the stage, create the right environment for them to know that, hey, I have something I want to talk to you about. I'm worried about this. Do you have some time later this afternoon for us to sit down and talk about yeah. it, right? It's all about yeah. how you frame these things that I think can really protect you too. Um, you have to frame it and you don't want to do it a Friday at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Friday at five? Probably no, not. No, 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 no. That's, it's uh Again, it's very easy. It's very easy for us to sit here and say, oh, you know, you should do it, you know, and plan it out. But when you've done, if something is going awry and you need to express some bad news, uh, the best, it's even true in our personal lives, you know, so it's uh, in business and personal lives, it's, it's cut to the chase and uh, raise the flag and say, I need some help or assistance, or I made a mistake and I need some help. You'll be respected more in the end, <laughs> amazingly enough. And what's so true is if you raise your hand and ask for help sooner, uh, rather than later. Absolutely. Um, by the way, I'm like, wow, it's, well, it's 540 here. Um, I'm like, wow, that 40 minutes just flew by. Um, we're going to wrap this up soon. Before we do, Dean, is there any kind of like parting words that you want to say? Any kind of like, you know, nuggets of wisdom that has worked well for you kind of in your long career? Um, things that you think that our viewers or listeners would appreciate? Nuggets of wisdom. Wow. That's well, you know, that's a uh, um, at the end of the day, you have to believe in your abilities and it's easier said than done sometimes, but we all need to believe in ourselves. And I think the last topic you talked touched on, it's OK to ask for help. And I think yeah. during these difficult times, these turbulent times we've all been through, a lot of people are hiding behind fake smiles. And uh, so my kernels of wisdom are ask for assistance, ask for help. It's OK to do so and reach out to others and network. And also, if you're in a situation where things are going well for you, reach out to other people who you think might need some help. That person who works alone remotely, uh, reach out to them and just check in. How difficult can that be? So it's uh, be yourself, believe in your abilities, but at the same time, use your emotional intelligence to be aware of what's going on with others. And that's how you separate yourself as a great communicator, a great leader, and I think more importantly, as a great person. Absolutely. I love that. And one thing I'll add to that, and in fact, it actually, not that I'm trying to plug this in, but I was I was just going to say that the LinkedIn learning course that, that I did that just came out yesterday, um, it's all about visibility. How can you be visible when you're in a remote world? Just because I'm I'm in California, I know you're on the East Coast, that doesn't mean, you know, we can't be visible. So there are strategies that I talk about in this course of, and again, it's all about being proactive, finding those opportunities, carving out those opportunities for yourself, I think it's really important too. So. Well, you're very modest, by the way, also your courses, uh, yeah. you know, so it's uh, when we talk about views and people around the world who watch and are learning from you, a million different people have watched your <laughs> courses. Three, it's three different courses, a million, you know, it's like, oh my goodness, Jessica. But you know how impressive that is, but also the impact that has made on people on improving their skills and, uh, so speaking of things to be proud of, you should uh, be proud of yourself <laughs> for those things, Jessica. For sure. Well, thank you so much, Dean. And honestly, you know, I just, well, first of all, I have to thank LinkedIn for giving me that opportunity to teach this topic. But I think to me, it's just, I think this is one of those things where you can constantly learn. You know, communications is not, it's not like once you achieved it, you don't need to think about it anymore. Communications is you being agile, environments change, people change. You know, I'm constantly learning as I'm going to. But Thank you for that. Um, you know what? 
I'm so grateful for you, Dean. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for being on the Soulcast Media Live. I truly enjoyed talking with you. I hope everybody who's on this right now has enjoyed our conversation. Dean, where can people find you? Well, as people know, I'm on LinkedIn all the time. I post pretty much every day and I talk about a variety of different topics. So please reach out to me, connect with me on LinkedIn and share your ideas. And I'll be sure to try and share ideas back with uh, back with you. So it's uh, Dean Carroll at uh, LinkedIn and uh, K-A-R-R-E-L. <laughs> so awesome. connect with me anytime. Well, again, thank you, everybody who's joining. I know in Asia right now, it's your morning. So I appreciate you guys starting out your morning with us. And for those here on the, at least, you know, the US side, I guess it's entering our evening now. So I hope everybody has a good night. Dean, thank you for, you know, staying with us. And um, again, everybody knows how to reach out. So I'm here on LinkedIn. Feel free to reach out with any questions. And again, like Dean mentioned, make sure to um, follow him and follow his content as well. So thank you, everybody, for joining. Bye. Bye Bye-bye, Jessica. Bye.